Remember when your mom would tell you, stop playing so many video games, it's bad for you. Well, what if I were to tell you that she was wrong? Mostly. Today, we're gonna shed light on five ways the gaming can actually be extremely beneficial to your health and cognitive development. Look, we all know that there's a lot of downtime during COVID, so if you're anything like me, you've been spending a lot of it gaming. Of course, there are negatives to playing games all day, every day, and we're definitely not insisting that there are only benefits. Remember that anything in excess can be harmful. But with that disclaimer out of the way, let's sit back and take a look at some of the positive health effects of gaming. Number one, they can help your eyesight. No mom, I'm not gonna go blind watching the screen all day. Contrary to this common belief, according to Harvard Health Publishing, staring at a screen all day actually does not have a significant negative impact on your vision. Heavy gamers are actually much more attentive to details, both in-game and then subsequently in real life. Through gaming, they develop more sense of spatial awareness, and experts have discovered that playing action games in particular improves an ability called contrast sensitivity function. This ability helps us discern between changes in shades of gray against a colored backdrop, which is very beneficial while driving at night. Essentially, players are more sensitive to slightly different shades of color and have a heightened perception of three-dimensional objects. Number two, video games might help ease pain. It's common to try and distance ourselves from pain by paying attention to something else or focusing on other body mechanisms. And that's not the only reason why games are a good post-injury prescription. We think of this medicine as a digital medicine that delivers experiential treatments. The video game is essentially like our pill. Oh my. Virtual reality is powerful because it's as if the VR has temporarily inoculated the brain against pain. With virtual reality, we've seen a 50% reduction in pain. So do you feel like you're in a hospital now? Or? Well, I definitely forgot I was in a hospital. Playing can actually produce a pain-killing response in our higher cortical systems by hitting the adrenaline receptors. These benefits are also being studied for mental health improvements, specifically in remapping the brain for depression. For the optimal benefits, the more immersive the game, the better, which is why there are many, many virtual reality systems in the works that will hopefully someday be as prevalent in hospitals as hand sanitizer. Number three, assist in the treatment of many diseases and chronic illnesses. Video games are being used in healthcare, for example, to help kids understand what they're going through when they're going through cancer treatments. The game called I Hope lets them visualize how their bodies are fighting the bad cells. And that can actually bring about a lot of understanding in what they're going through. There are a number of advances in gaming and VR that treat not only pain, but assist in the treatment of many diseases and chronic illnesses. Examples being autism and Asperger's, dyslexia, multiple sclerosis, and many more. Specifically with autism and Asperger's, experts have seen that using games that incorporate the entire body to control on-screen movements improve the patient's positive interaction with peers and increase in social skills. Think Wii Sports. While this approach assists the communication skills that autism sometimes presents, the attention issues found in dyslexics have also found a beneficial approach. One study has shown that following a heavy action game, dyslexics improve their reading comprehension skills. Their conclusion is that the constantly changing environments in the games require intense focus, activating the parts of the brain used for reading. Number four, quick thinking, making fast analysis and decisions. It takes about 50 to 100 procedures to achieve basic proficiency. You're relying on random chance to get exposure to those surgeries. With virtual reality, you go from having one tibia to infinite tibias, right? You can get those reps in. You can use it anytime, anywhere. You can train on any procedure. You can train as a team and train remotely. You may think the doctors are all work and no play, but researchers found that surgeons who regularly play video games actually make 37% fewer errors and perform their tasks 27% faster than their peers. Essentially, action game players make more correct decisions per unit time. Some surgeons develop video game courses to warm up their coordination, agility, and accuracy before even heading into the operation room. I mean, that's a pretty badass aim training, huh? Imagine how good surgeons must be at high aim intensive games like Valorant or CSGO. Furthermore, games that simulate real-world events such as those in battle and action games can actually be beneficial in training soldiers by heightening their sense of their surroundings. That is pretty incredible. 
Neuroplasticity is the phenomena by which our brains modify itself in response to interactions with the environment. Plasticity has no morality. It will go in a direction that the interactions take it. So if your interactivity leads to a negative outcome, there is certainly the danger that they could have a negative impact on people's psychology. We want to do the opposite. If you give someone a VR experience that's very intense, but instead of killing somebody, they're saving someone's life, will that experience transfer? With the hero study, you literally become a hero, and you become Superwoman or Superman by using your body to fly around, the wind is rushing through your hair, the floor is shaking, you then save a child's life, the control condition is maybe you rode in a helicopter. When you fly like a hero and save a child's life, you're more helpful to someone that has an accident outside of VR compared to if you didn't get that gift of having a superpower and using it for good. And the same way a single experience in your lifetime can be transformational, so can a well-crafted virtual reality experience. The brain is always computing probabilities, and action video game players' brains are just more efficient collectors of visual and auditory information. And therefore, they arrive at the necessary threshold of information that is needed to make a decision, and they do it much faster than those non-gamers. Number five, childhood development. One of the unique things about video games is it meets students where they are. So when you're playing a game, you're playing at the level where you're ready to play, and you're advancing at the pace where you can advance. And that means that your education is being customized and your learning is really being maximized. While the historically popular view maintains playing video games are intellectually lazy and a waste of time, we're actually finding that they may strengthen a range of cognitive skills such as spatial navigation, reasoning, memory, and perception. Experts say that this is particularly true for FPS games. Expert analysis and controlled studies say that shooter games enhance the same skills that come from academic courses, specifically the capacity to think and perceive three-dimensional objects. This enhanced thinking was not found in playing other types of video games, such as puzzles or role-playing games, but puzzles and RPGs have their own separate benefits. Puzzle games greatly increase children's brain development by implementing strategy, critical thinking, problem solving, and planning. As for RPG games, they can boost self-expression, build creativity, and technical skills. Essentially, playing video games, and yes, even violent shooter games, may boost learning, health, and social skills, according to a review of research published by the American Psychological Association. Video games increase your child's self-confidence and self-esteem as they master the games. In many games, the level of difficulty are also adjustable, so as a beginner, your kid begins at an easy level by constantly practicing and slowly building skills, they can become more confident and handle more difficult challenges, increasing the difficulty of the game. Since the cost of failure is lower, there's less fear of making mistakes, and they can take more risks and explore more. Your kid can even transfer this attitude to real life. Well, that's gonna be it for today. As this list was brief and only five of many, many more benefits seen in gaming, make sure to let us know in the comment section below any that you've heard about that we might have missed. Also, let us know if you'd like us to dive deeper into any of these topics in a future video. We're always reading your suggestions and love hearing from the community. This has been Kangas, and I'll see you all in the next one.